Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. The spirit of Adonai Elohim is upon me because Adonai has appointed me to announce good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to let out into light those bound in dark. To proclaim the year of the favor of Adonai and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn, yes, provide for those in Zion who mourn, giving them garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a cloak of praise instead of a heavy spirit, so that they will be called oaks of righteousness planted by Adonai in which he takes pride. So here's a statement you can trust, one that fully deserves to be accepted. The Messiah came into the world to save sinners, and I'm the number one sinner. Yet, but this is precisely why I received mercy, so that in me, as the number one sinner, Yeshua the, Mes the Messiah might demonstrate how very patient he is as, as an example to those who would later come to trust in him and thereby have eternal life. So to the king, eternal, imperishable, and invisible, the only God there is, let there be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Advent series where we are talking about the light that came into the world and the gift that God gave to all humankind. So, have your tea, your coffee, or your hot chocolate. Let's get into it. From the scriptures that we just read that started off this video, we can see that there is darkness. If you remember from the video yesterday, we talked about how God said, let there be light, and he separated the light from the darkness on the very first day, and how we as humans have a innate desire to be, to be drawn towards the light, you know. So today, we're going to talk about the other side of that. What is it to be found in darkness? What do we do in our lives when, it, when we are found to be in darkness? Because as scripture says, the first verse was Isaiah. Isaiah 5.20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitterness. Woe to those who call something what it's not, who in our world try to redefine something that has already been defined and redefine it in a way that makes it unrecognizable to what it truly is. Woe to those who, whether by foolishness or intentional, those who try to deceive. You know, the act of deception is what called darkness into the light, into humanity into creation. If you think back to the beginning of the Bible, creation of man and woman and the fall. So Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 tells us of the creation of men and women and how God intimately made and crafted each gender. But then in chapter 3, we see that the serpent who is being used by Satan as a, a pawn um, is calling darkness into the world by calling the woman to question what God told Adam. What the one commandment from God was to not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil 
So once you do, you will surely die. Right, to call that into question. Did God really say that? Are you sure that's what he meant? I think he may have meant this. So, we see the act of deception, the act of calling good evil, or calling evil good, and what is good evil, and getting us to see that what is actually bad could be good. It's, it's really the, the idea that it could be good. It could be. I know I'm not supposed to do that. I know that um, if, if you've done it before, that it doesn't feel good after. But I think it's good. So what are some current trends where what has been called good evil and what has been called evil good in today's world or in your own life you know, i can think of the idea that having sexual relations with multiple individuals is a good thing that is what our culture is, is now deeming as good. It is better for you to sleep with multiple partners, to know what you need to do sexually, um, than it is for you to stay a virgin and wait until marriage. But then you see these podcasts that are coming out and or you see clips, or you see um, just individual videos online of women and men talking about their sexual relations and how it's not good. If you look at the heart of those individuals, they are broken. And they're not finding the wholeness that they thought they would find or that they're seeking in these sort of, in, in sex. Um, I think about one of the more recent ones I've heard of lately is the young woman from Australia who slept with about 300 people in one year and now is having a very difficult time finding a boyfriend and is so desperate in a way that she made is making a series on TikTok, I believe, where she's documenting going on a date every day for a year, I think, which seems to be just as productive as sleeping with a bunch of people rather than committing to one person and both of you melding together uh, to become one, to date multiple people, whether or not you're going to have sex with them, uh, seems counterintuitive. So that would be an example where I could see someone calling what is evil good because sex has been deemed for a man and a woman to come together and to become one flesh um and the idea of it has become perverse there are other examples that we can think of uh, sort of within that same realm one that speaks more directly to me and my life, my personal testimony, is the lies that surround gender identity and how um, you could be born in the wrong gender, the wrong body, and uh, how now the idea that there are more than two genders and that there are 
that gender is fluid and, and all these um, ideas is a perversion of truth. You know, God created man and, and female. Um, and I know some people will try to say that the them in that sentence is uh, pointing towards non-binary people. It's not. Okay, that's a perversion of scripture itself. Um, it says that in his image he created them, meaning that there's more than one. And if you look, there's female and male, and that is more than one. So, that's how we can know that it's not talking about a singular them. Um, but that's a different topic, or a different video, I should say. Um, so we can see, like, there are instances, instances of darkness in our world. And sometimes we even, Christians, can be found in darkness because we have not been made fully perfect. It Perfection is the journey of sanctification. It is something to seek, to work towards being. The idea that God has for perfection is not the same as what the world has for perfection. I need to, to say that because there are people who are debilitated by perfectionism. Um, I can... I, being one of them, uh, have a difficult time even just uploading these because I know how to do more video things than what I do. I just, you know, for these videos, I just have my phone, my iPhone, and my head headphones. I really don't edit anything. I'm just putting it out there. And I've had to do internal work and really pray and meditate on God's word and what he's telling me to do and just focusing on the next thing that is on the list of things that he has for me to do and step a step away from the world's idea of perfectionism of always having the everything look on point um, life is not a magazine and you know, it can debilitate you if if you let it. Um, so, you know, even in my own life, I struggle with pits of darkness, trying to work them out and bring them into the light. And sometimes, you know, I've been a Christian for a very long time. I've been a Torah observant Christian for several years now and I still find places that I need to work out areas that I need to grow in and to be a little bit uncomfortable and I think we all have those in our lives um, I believe that if you don't then you're dead <laughs> if you've worked everything out or you just stopped working then you're dead there's there's nothing more for you to do you finish the race you've gone on um, so then we're all working out our own salvation in a way like what I struggle with is not the same as what my husband struggles with it is not the same as what my children may struggle with um, and the way that I struggle is is different than somebody else who might struggle with perfectionism or anxiety or um, depression things like that the things that I do struggle with so we have to 
we'll constantly be calling ourselves back into the light, constantly be in God's word. I think that is where the light is. Um, David tells us in Psalm that your word is a light unto my feet, a lamp uh, that lights my path. And what that what that would mean for us is to stay in his word. A lot of the perversion that is happening in today's world is due to Christians getting out of God's word and allowing people who are wolves in sheepskin to to lie and to be deceptive, to call what is evil good and what is good evil and to slide by um, out of fear of being called some sort of something some name out of a fear of being ridiculed or have their lives ripped from them you know we there, there's many, many reasons why we, as American Christian culture, have stepped away from the Word of God. Um, we've had, you know, we make excuses. We have busy lives. We have to go here. We have this work. And the last thing we want to do is to read because whenever we read, we go to sleep and we don't have time to sleep. Yada, yada, yada. But the only way to stay truly rooted in God and to be able to reject the advice of the wicked, to be able to stand up for what God deems is good and pure and holy and what God has defined. The only way to do that is to root yourself in his word. As it says in Psalms verse 1, or chapter 1 verse 1, How blessed are those who reject the advice of the wicked. Don't stand on the way of sinners or sit where scoffers sit. Their delight is in Adonai's Torah. On his Torah they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams. They bear their fruit in season. Their leaves never wither. Nothing they do, everything they do succeeds. Not so the wicked, who are like chaff driven by the wind. For the reason the wicked won't stand up to judgment, nor will sinners at the gathering of the righteous. For Adonai watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. So if we plant ourselves in God's word, we take the time to wake up early if that's what we need to do stay up late if that's what we need to do read it on our lunch break if that's what we need to do listen to it in the car on the way to or from work um whatever it is being diligent to be in god's word then we will be found in the light we will not be in the darkness we will not be one of these people who Hence, uh, deception in a way. You know, we as as a parent, uh, we are called the the Shema, the uh, Deuteronomy six four through nine. Shema Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel. Adonai are God, Adonai is one, and you are to love Adonai with all your heart, with all your being, and all your resources. These words which I am ordering you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them carefully to your children. You are to talk about them when you sit at home, when you are traveling on the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them on your hand as a sign. Put them at the front of your headband around your forehead and write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. These words in, in the Bible, these, 
these are to be our lifeblood. The word of God is meant to be what dictates our path, what decides where we go, how we talk, how we act, who we talk to, um, how we spend our money, all of it is, is, is this. Is, there's an answer for literally everything, and I do mean literally everything, in this book. Um, which I know is a, is, a, is a broad, a big statement, and I do not claim to know everything because I've read this several times and I, I don't know everything, but I've not dealt with everything and I won't ever deal with everything and neither will you. So we can just both get off of our high horses and understand that I am not the final authority on life and decisions, God is. God created the world, he created the light and the darkness he created the humans in the world. He created the animals in the world. Everything that we see, he created. The serpent came in and allowed for deception to partake uh, in creation in a way. Um, he and Eve and Adam in a way work together to curse humanity um, and because of that we have we have to deal with with evilness um, with the deception with temptation with sin with separation from God and all the things that are um, And we have to see now our need for a Messiah. Whenever we come to a reckoning within ourselves, whenever we realize that all we need is God in every situation, then we, come, we begin to come into light. We begin to step out of the darkness of our own lives and see the light of the world, the Shekinah glory, the, the sun as he is. So I would encourage you to step into the light, to get into God's word. Sometimes it's you, you don't know where to go. Um, and if that's you, if you have no idea, if you've not read your Bible ever, you don't have a Bible, you've never read one, or it's been years since you read one, um, a bit of advice. One is to pray about it. I do believe that if we pray that we to God and say, God, I'm seeking you and I want to find you. I want to know what this is about or whatever it is that you want to know. And ask for him to lead you to the scriptures that you need in your life. He will lead you to the scriptures that you need. The other thing is um, in the Jewish and Messianic traditions, there are Torah readings. Uh, my Bible has them printed, but in here, in the very back. Um, and these are places that you could start. This is, this is a place you could start reading. Um, there's an organization called the First Fruits of Zion. I will try to link them in the description below, but they have Torah portions 
outlines available as well as um, articles that will go with that go with each week Torah scripture um, to allow for a better understanding of it. With the Torah scripture, there's uh, the prophets are also read and the gospels. Um, are read not just the gospels the uh, the epistles do the letters and things um to and that's specific to the the messianic community to to show messiah yeshua in the old testament and the, those prophecies the scriptures being fulfilled in yeshua's life and his work um, but those are places that I would start to read to get into God's Word. Um, I also like to encourage people to just get into John. The, the book of John is one of the more comprehensible versions of Jesus' life and work. Um, and the divinity of Jesus. But uh, he, him or Mark, I like both of those. Mark's pretty easy, Mark is pretty straightforward. Um, but anyways, yeah, just step out of the darkness, get into the light. May God bless you and may he keep you, may he give you his shalom. And I'll see you tomorrow.